the U.S. State Department has just issued two unprecedented travel safety advisories for American citizens living and traveling abroad due to geopolitical instability throughout the world, specifically in the Mideast region. Currently, I'm chilling here in Seoul, South Korea. Um, shows you how much I really listen to the State Department's travel advisories. However, don't, take, uh, don't follow my example, follow my advice. I'm going to explain to you in this video why, from personal experience, I know that doesn't really matter too much and how that you can stay safe while traveling abroad pretty much no matter where you are. Whether you're an American citizen, a European citizen, or a citizen from any country throughout the world, if you follow these 10 travel safety tips, you will definitely be a hard target. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, guys, I want to make you aware that at GutterFightingSecrets.com, I have two separate travel safety products, Travel Safety for Americans Abroad and Travel Safety 2.0. The latter being an online direct download program. You can actually even choose which chapters you want to purchase and purchase those specific chapters. Click a couple of buttons. It's yours to keep. No freaking DVDs to order, nothing like that. And you can learn about, well, I want to learn today about taxi cab safety and security, or I want to learn today about hard skills training, or I want to learn today about counterterrorism techniques for traveling abroad, whatever it is. You can buy it chapter by chapter, and it makes it a lot easier. GutterFightingSecrets.com. Travel safety tips, guys. If you are interested in this subject, it's a long, broad topic. We cover it in detail, all right? I've been through a lot of hard skills, soft skills training on this particular subject, all right? And I've also traveled the world more times than I can freaking count. So I want to make sure that you're safe. If that interests you, great, check it out. If not, check out these travel safety tips right here, and it's going to make you a hard target irregardless. Let's jump in. All right, so I mentioned that I'm sitting here overseas right now after these two kind of unprecedented worldwide travel alerts for American citizens. And uh, I explained to you that I'm really not concerned, and I'm going to tell you why right now. Um, I'm sitting here in Korea. There's no Islamic terrorism in Korea, guys. Like, I don't know, like there's some Muslims, but like they're not... There's no Islamic terrorism. Um, so I'm pretty damn safe over here. In fact, I'm probably safer over here than I am in New York City. You know what I mean? So knowing your area of interest, we can say, is really important. Like knowing the region that you're going to and making your decisions based off that rather than making your decisions based off fear. Because the mainstream media, whether you're living in the US and watching that, whether you're living in the UK and watching the BBC, like whatever, Mainstream media, they are wanting to get you afraid so that you'll tune into their stuff. Let me make sure my microphone is on so I don't mess myself up with this, thank gosh. The mainstream media wants to get you afraid so that you'll click on their stuff and you'll pay attention to their articles. If they were telling you what I'm telling you, which is don't really worry about it, know where you're going and make your plans based off that, they wouldn't get anyone to watch their stuff. Um, so, you know, I remember... I remember one time when I was in Turkey, I was talking with an American expat, and um, I was getting on the plane from, I don't remember, maybe it was Jordan or the UAE, and I was heading over there, and I was talking with him, and I was like, hey, dude, like, is there anything I need to watch out for in Turkey? He laughs. He goes, dude, I get it. We're both Americans, like, but don't, don't listen to mainstream media, bro. Like, you're fine over there as an American. It's totally legit, and it was. So... Be careful who you listen to. Um, I'm not telling you to go and like, certainly I wouldn't go and travel to the Middle East right now, uh, not as an American and certainly not as a European uh, heritage American, but um, you know, elsewhere in the world, the Bahamas or somewhere like that, or here in Asia, like more than likely you'll be all right. Um, you can never say never, but you know, chances are good that, you know, you're over in, I don't know, Jordan right now. You should watch out. But over somewhere like this, you're a little bit safer. I'll leave it at that. Number two is going to be research, right? So know before you go. Know before you go. Now, what are we researching? Well, the first one of the first things that I always research is the laws. Because I know a lot of American citizens get in trouble abroad, not necessarily even because of like gang violence or targeting of American citizens by terrorists uh, but 
targeting of American citizens by law enforcement. All right, it happens. And even not even just targeting of American citizens, but people who break laws in other countries, like Americans who break laws in other countries, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons it happens is because they don't know about it and they didn't research it before they go. But unfortunately for you and me, like just because you don't know about the law doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? And they will prosecute you. Um, they'll persecute you too for being an American, frankly, but they will prosecute you uh, for these laws if you break them. So one of the first things I look at is like, hey, well, what can I get away with over there? And what can I not? Like, there's random, there's weird random laws, right? Like, this, there's a lot of them. So know them before you go, uh, research them, right? You don't have to know every single law, but get a broad outline of like, well, what's, what's the norm? What's the baseline out there, right? And it's one thing we talk a lot about with travel safety is knowing the baseline kind of knowing what's normal and what's not, staying within the bounds of what's normal, what's socially accepted. And so that, that brings me into customs, like know the customs out there, know what's rude and what's not. Another way that people get in trouble is unknowingly like being super offensive to people. In the Middle East, uh, you know, that could be like showing them the, the bottom of your foot, like the sole of your shoe, or like not, like just not taking off your shoes with, before you go into a place in, in Asia, right? Like uh, someone's home or like, you know, stupid stuff like that, that like probably wouldn't get you like serious trouble, but it would, it's offensive. And like, you should know about that because you don't, you don't want to offend anybody. And this leads me into kind of another thing here is um, practice really making friends and being polite to people so that they'll like you more and they'll not want to get you in any trouble. If people like you, if people think you're a polite person, they're going to be more willing to like forgive whatever offensive behavior you are displaying, like especially if it's, you know, if they know that you don't know, right? So be as polite as possible. That way, when you are unknowingly impolite, they're able to forgive you for it. Research potential hazards, right? So like what, not only potential hazards as far as like, well, where are the bad areas and like what kind of like what is there crime out there? What type of crime should I look into? Is it mostly pickpockets? Should I, you know, keep my phone close at hand? Because like I know in some places, a lot of places these days, uh, you don't want to have your phone hanging out because a motorbike will come by. They'll snatch it from you and say goodbye to your phone. Right. So um, but also research like potential natural disasters that might happen. Are you in an earthquake prone area? You know, is it? flood season is it the rainy season if you are going you know over to somewhere kind of more third world country like what what vaccinations do i should i am i recommended i know a lot of you guys don't fucking believe in that shit but what recommend recommended vaccines should i get what what medications should i bring over with me should i bring amodium over with me should i get a prescription of z-pack from my doctor if he'll give it to me before I go just in case, right? Like what is, what are the potential things that could go wrong and what can I do to mitigate these risks and prepare ahead of time to mitigate them? So preparing ahead of time when it comes to traveling abroad and staying safe is paramount. And if you do nothing else, but kind of prepare and know before you go, that will literally aid you more than anything else we can talk about in this video. And that's, a large part of what we talk about in Travel Safety 2.0 and also the original Travel Safety for Americans is knowing about these things before you go, how to research them the right way, and then how to implement them when you get in country. Knowing before you go is really huge. So um, number three is going to be soft skills, right? And soft skills are really the most important thing. There was a there was a quote from, oh man, I forget the old movie. It was with Brad Pitt and I, Robert Redford, okay? And it was like spy something or other. And um, it, was, it was an all right movie, but the really, there was a really good quote that I, I remember Robert Redford said. And uh, he said, you know, all of this spy training and stuff, um, most of the time all you'll need is a stick of gum, a pocket knife, and a smile. And that's like literally so true. And I'm not a spy, all right? But I do know that throughout your training, or I'm sorry, throughout your traveling, <laughs> Freudian slip there, throughout your traveling, 
you're really most of the time you're going to need to be nice to people, have nice breath, like be likable, right? And um, that's it. A pocket knife, unfortunately for us, like these days, knives are illegal in most countries like outside of the U.S. Like there's just, that's one thing you should know about, like you know the local laws and customs, right? Can I carry a knife? No. I know a lot of action guys like us that we always want to have a knife with us, but like, dude, honestly, leave the knife at home. Like, it's just going to get you into trouble. I remember actually going into Dubai one time. I got pulled aside at customs and um, I got pulled into secondary because I had like two tactical knives and like two flashlights, right? One is one, two is one. And they were like, what the fuck are you doing? What's your mission? This and that. And I had to convince them that I wasn't there on any like orders or any like it was a headache right it was a bad thing and like i now i don't know maybe i'm on some kind of like list in in the uae i don't know but like that could have all been avoided by not bringing any tactical gear with you we'll talk about this in a minute here but don't don't bring any type of that stuff with you learn to rely on your charm and if you don't have charm learn charm if you don't have soft skills how to deal with people how to make friends you need to learn these things because these are going to come in like useful as where shooting with nods is just not. You're not going to need that. I'm sorry to tell you. Sorry to break it to you. Right? I'm sorry to ruin your Rambo fantasy, but like all of your hard skills training, more than likely you will not use those abroad, period, unless you're a ranger or a Navy SEAL like going into combat. It's just the way of it. You need to be actively trying to make friends, but don't trust anybody. Never trust anybody. Be, to, do realize that as an American, even as an EU or UK citizen, you're a target. Okay, But more so than being a target for terrorism, you're a target financially, especially in you know, more quote-unquote third world countries. People are going to look at you and see a dollar sign, and that's what it is. People don't like... People don't want to be your friend unless you put effort into it. So in other words, if you meet somebody and they're too friendly too fast, they want something from you. And generally what that is, is money. And they're going to like scam you in some way. All right. People don't go around like acting really friendly towards tourists because they like and they want to get to know you. You're not that cool. Even if you are that cool, they don't know you're that cool. So don't freaking trust these people. They're not your friends. They're after your money. Um, so just realize that do go out there, do make connections, do make friendships, more so be friendly with people and, you know, leave it at that. Try not to think that they're your best friend because they're not, but you do want to, you know, charm people, win people over. And that way you'll have better connections and you're able to say, Hey, you know, dude, I remember I was in Oman once. Um, for those of you guys who don't know where Oman is, it's a country off the Gulf of Oman. It's near Iran, but it's not Iran. And um, there was, uh, what was it? There was a large amount of flooding going on. I had met this guy, uh, Ahmed. Ahmed was a former royal palace guard to the Sultan. Really good guy to know. Really nice guy. And um, I remember we were trying to get around. And like in the desert like that, like the, there's not a lot of storm drains because it doesn't rain like that that much. Like everything was freaking flooded. So I remember I had his number on WhatsApp and I like texted him and I was like, bro, like what's the best route? I think we were trying to get back to the hotel, but like the cab driver couldn't get us back. I think it was the hotel. Anyway, I texted him and I was like, dude, like what's the best route? Like we can't get back. And he ended up getting on the phone and calling the guy that was driving us around and like directing him into the, I think, yeah, the hotel that we were staying at. It was cool, man. So like Go out there and make connections with people, and they will help you out if they can, especially because you are a tourist. Um, so another thing, and that brings me into this, is use GPS and navigation skills to your advantage. So like one thing that I do recommend is if you are in a taxi cab, especially like you just get in country and you're in a taxi cab and you're going to your hotel or play wherever you're staying, um, I recommend if you can... Have like Apple Maps or Google Maps or something or Waze running in the background while you do get in that taxi cab and while he is driving you. That way, if you are veering off course, you've, nev you've never been to that country. You don't know where the fuck like he's going. You're trusting he'll bring you there. Um, but unfortunately, it, it does happen where people get robbed and stuff, right? Um, so if he's veering too much off course, you can, start, you can start barking orders at him and say, listen, 
You know, if you don't freaking take me to where I want to go, <laughs> I'm going to put hands on you, my man. Like, you know, you, you don't want to ever get into a situation where you have to put hands on anybody overseas because you're always going to be in the wrong. And um, some countries like don't extradite and don't ever expect your embassy or your uh, to do anything for you. They won't. You're going to sit in a foreign jail like it's a terrible thing. Don't ever do any of that unless you like have literally no other choice and you're directly fearing for your life. But even at that, realize that you're in the wrong still. Um, so, but that's one thing that I can tell you is use these navigational aids to your advantage. I remember um, I forget which I forget which bodyguard school I was working with, but they were giving us a lecture and a course. I took a course on. Um, using navigational aids from Google Maps as soon as you get in country. So that's another thing that you can do is go ahead and like do a Google Maps thing and just get landmarks, right? That way if your phone doesn't work for some reason, and this is, you would only really ever do this in like a questionable situation or questionable country, right? But you can literally go on Google Maps and like get landmarks and say, all right, along my route is there's going to be a cell phone tower. I know it's going to be on the left-hand side. I eventually want to see that on my left. Then you could say, all right, well, over here, it looks like this is a, I don't know, whatever, the, a water tower. Use landmarks that you don't think are going to disappear. Like, don't use a storefront because that might, the Google Maps thing might be like um, two years old and that store's not there anymore, right? But like, use landmarks like, oh, there's mountains on this side. I see that this should be on my right you know, so many, so many kilometers or so many miles up here. That's another thing that you can do. Um, and it's just pro tips from me to you. I don't think I've ever had to use that, but I definitely have had to use the, um, the GPS while I'm driving trick and it, it helps. Another thing you can do just bonus tip for me to you is, um, take a picture of the license plate and, um, you could take a picture of the driver too. That could be a little, they might get a little funny about that, but Definitely, you could take a picture of the license plate and like let him know that you're doing that ahead of time, just so he knows. Like, he probably sent that picture to somebody. There's no funny business here. Um, so you know, and these things go into more like if you're traveling in a hostile or potentially hostile or third world nation, but vary your routes and times of travel. And uh, do keep in mind that whenever you're traveling, whenever you're actively on the move, is when you're most vulnerable. So if you are concerned, um, instead of leaving your hotel or residence or whatever every day at 6 a.m., you know, some days leave at 6, one day leave at 7, one day leave at 10 o'clock. Like if you can do it, if you can swing it, it's really, it really helps. That way nobody can really get a bead on when you're supposed to be where. Uh, another thing is like leaving from different exits. Like don't go out the front every single day if you can avoid it. Sometimes if there's a door in the side or the back, go out there, you know, um, vary your times and routes and everything as much as possible. If you are driving or renting a car, well, don't take the exact same A to B route every time, right? Sometimes take a, take a back road, take a back road. So that can help. Um, keep your plans to yourself. So another thing that we always talk about is don't like, don't post where you are on social media. Um, don't, don't tell anybody your itinerary. Like you can tell one or two people back at home, trusted people like your itinerary. That's not a bad idea, right? You want someone to know kind of where you're going to be or where you're planning on being, but certainly don't discuss it with anybody that's not in your immediate family or that you don't trust or whatever. Um, that's sensitive information. If somebody knows where you're going to be, you're easy to kidnap, you're easy to get. So if you are worried about that type of thing, um, I would certainly not share my itinerary around. I would certainly not tell anybody, you know, where you plan to be at any given time. Um, another thing that I will say about that is when you are in public and you are discussing your itinerary with a friend or somebody, talk softly. Don't let everyone overhear your next travel plans. Don't let everyone know tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'm leaving for London. I'll be there for four days. I'm staying at the, the London hotel and, you know, I plan to go to dinner on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. there. And then I'm going to get on the channel and go to France and I'm going to be staying at the hotel, the 
Paris, Hotel de Paris or whatever. Like, don't, don't just like chances are you'll be fine, but you never know who the fuck is listening to you. So be talk softly. And I know as Americans, we talk loud. We just do. It's what we do. I remember I was in Amsterdam one time uh, many years ago and I was talking with my friend Nick and uh, we were talking. I was like, bro, did you hear about that? Did you see that? Da, da, da. All of a sudden it just dawned on me. I look, look around and everyone's looking at us. Nobody else is talking that loud, right? Like everyone else is talking very softly. Like in Amsterdam, they do that kind of around Europe in different places, not so much the UK, but you know, around many countries in Europe, they talk a lot softer. So like, don't be the idiot American talking really loud when everyone else is talking softly, but definitely don't freaking be the idiot American who discusses your travel plans in front of other people. And if you are forced to talk about them near other people, talk softly and realize that's very sensitive information. Um, so learn hard skills, but don't ever use them and don't ever think you're going to have to use them. Now going through like what I did, I've, I've gone through many, many, many hours and many, many days and weeks and months even of, um, you know, travel safety, education and training and hard skills, training and soft skills, training and evasive driving and negotiation and blah, 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 blah. Right. Like learn that stuff. But you probably will never use any of it. Is it good to know? Is evasive driving good to know? Absolutely. Is um, unimproved roads driving good to know if you're going to an African nation? Yes, absolutely you should. Um, things like that are great to know. Some of it you may need to use, but most of it you won't. Like, will you need to use foreign weapons of familiarization? Gosh, I hope not. You know, will you need to know... Um, think of some other things that that they teach you know combative strain probably not will you need to know surveillance detection routes more than likely not um is it good backup yes i think that if specifically if you're going over to a dangerous area you should be trained in these things you should know these things they will they can help but also know that um don't don't try to play james bond overseas you're not james bond overseas um and if you were you wouldn't be watching this. So be very careful and diligent. And that actually leads me in to uh, kind of the next thing is uh, never travel with any gear. I told you the story about when I was in Dubai or the UAE that one time and I got in trouble because of the knives and the flashlights. Again, you're not James Bond. Um, and, you know, if you were James Bond, you wouldn't be going over there. You wouldn't want to be caught crossing any borders with any type of gear, right? And, like, that's the last thing you want is to ever be pegged to something that you're not. And especially these days, and especially going over to you know certain countries, you never want anyone to confuse you for something that you're not. You know what I mean by that? It's very dangerous. So, And that's how you're, you're more than likely to get in trouble rather than you know dealing with locals. It's really important that you just, like you leave all your gear at home, learn the skills, internalize them, know how to operate if you need to, but you don't need any of that gear Anything you really do need, you could pick up in country. If you are super concerned and do need to bring like a handcuff key or shims or anything like that, okay, um, try as best you can to like hide them well. Because again, you really don't want to get caught with any of that stuff. Now, um, diversify your assets is another thing that you'll learn eventually if you do this enough carry a credit card with you, but have another one back in the hotel safe and have a third one hidden somewhere, right? Take some cash with you, um, but then have some more cash hidden somewhere else and then have a little bit more hidden somewhere else. So that's diversifying your assets. Uh, never put all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. If you do have mission critical um, equipment, which in our case as civilians would be like more than likely cash, ID, medication, things like that, have like two or three different spots where you're, you're hiding two of them and you're carrying one of them on you would be my, would be my advice to you. Also, um, same goes for carrying currency on your person. Have some in your pocket, maybe have a little bit more in your shoe, you know, maybe have a little bit more in another pocket, right? So that way, if you go to pull out some money, 
um, and it gets taken off you, that's not all your cash gone. You could still get a cab back home or whatever, right? Uh, another thing is have one pocket with small bills that you can take out in public and you're okay having people see you with that amount of currency. And then in the other pocket, you can have a little bit more currency that you can go and, you know, go in the bathroom or whatever, somewhere private. If you need to pull it out and put it in your other pocket, you can. Um, pickpockets, crimes of opportunity, crimes, you know, again, realize that you're a target, not necessarily because of your nationality, but because people see you as rich, if, regardless of if you are or not. People see you as a European or American or Brit, and they see a dollar sign, right? So that's what they're more than likely going to be after. So diversify your assets. The next thing is very James Bond, and I, I almost hate to bring it up because I don't want people going around there, like around the world trying to play James Bond. It's just not a good idea. But um, do you can and probably should have some sort of a light cover story. Um, if you do want to say that you're Canadian, right, um, that's fine. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. People don't need to know your nationality. And if they ask, they're not entitled to the truth. You can say that you're a Canadian if you're an American, right? I don't know why you'd ever say you're an American if you're Canadian. But you no, know, you can you can do that, right? Or if you're a Brit, you can say you're from New Zealand, right? But then know about that country, <laughs> know who the prime minister is, know a little bit about their political system, keep abreast of the news happening in that country, have a have a place of origin for yourself. Like, where are you? Are you from Toronto? Well, like, what what are the three counties or whatever around Toronto or provinces? Like, what know a little about the currency, like know a little bit about where you're saying you're from. If you say you're from New Zealand and you're a Brit, know about New Zealand. If you say you're a Canadian and you're American, know about Canada, right? Um, that's lessons that I've learned from experience, from hard knocks. Please, if you're going to be doing that, um, you can have an alias, that's fine. You can tell, your, tell, tell people your name is John Murphy or whatever, right? You can tell people I'm Derek Snyder, whatever. Um, they don't need to know. And chances are they'll never try to find out. But again, um, just have a backstory for anything that you do have. Otherwise, it's going to be embarrassing. And then it looks shady. So, um, so like I said about letting people know where you are, um, when you do get to a place, especially this doubly goes if you're traveling solo, is um, call home, whatever home is to you, you know, even if it's a friend back home in the States. Let them know where you are. Um, you don't need to know, you don't need to be exact about your plans, but let them know kind of broadly, like, hey, I'm going to be in this, you know, in this region, in this country today for the next three days, bro. Like, just want to let you know, whatever. Um, and that's a good idea. Again, being ultra specific about it might not be a great idea depending on where you are. But being specific enough that if anything did happen, Lord forbid, people would know where to start looking for you. And then... Um, Last thing I had is that your itinerary should be sensitive, so don't leave it laying around in the hotel room. I always expect that the maid's going to come in. Even if you put the do not disturb thing on, they're going to come in. They're going to check on your room. They're going to see what's going on. In certain countries, they might work for an intelligence service. Even if you're doing nothing wrong, they, they might be curious who you are. So just realize that um, if you don't want to have your laptop like Maybe somebody throws a SIM card in your laptop and takes the stuff off it. Like it does happen. Keep it in the safe. Um, I mean, you can't be you can't be completely safe, right? But it's like keep your electronics locked up. Certainly keep your valuables locked up or hidden. And um, just realize that that does happen, but don't bug out about it. Um, that's why we do recommend like if you are going to China or something, don't take your phone, don't take your computer, rent one, whatever. Um, but yeah, don't certainly don't leave your itinerary laying out. Like if you have a, a, a typed out or written itinerary, just keep that very secure and hide that shit. It's important. All right, guys. So that is a couple of travel safety tips that I've learned over the years. Some from the school of hard knocks, some from just whatever. All right. Like don't even worry about it. But I hope that some of these helped you if you guys are traveling abroad or are just curious about the subject. Definitely check out... Um, our Travel Safety 2.0, that's a direct download program on gutterfightingsecrets.com. It's a, probably about eight plus hours, but I said, like I said, you can get a chapter by chapter. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Stay safe out there, Americans. 
Stay safe out there, Brits. Stay safe out there, Europeans. Everybody, stay freaking safe, all right? I'll catch you in the next video, guys.